Good morning. Today I thought I'd take you on a tour of my studio and show you all the tools I use for making pottery and for making videos. The main thing you need to know about a potter's studio is it collects stuff. It just accumulates naturally here. I don't know a single potter that keeps a very clean studio. It's just hard to do. Uh, you've got different clays coming in all the time. You've got different paints and slips and materials. You've got projects in different states of completion. And so it just gets messy. And because this studio isn't just a pottery studio, but also a filming studio, a place where I make these videos, then it becomes a constant struggle to try to keep it tidy enough to look good in the videos while still allowing, you know, these different projects and different clays and stuff, a, a place to live. And I don't have a lot of shelf space here, you know, for, for stuff to accumulate. What ends up happening is it ends up consuming all the usable space quickly. For example, I have a couch on the other side of the studio. Oftentimes there's no place to sit here because the couch will have boxes or other things piled on it. I have a sink and a kitchen counter over here. Oftentimes that counter is completely covered in things and there's no place to put anything because when I'm trying to clean off my workbench here for some filming, where's it gonna go? It goes there or it goes on the couch or you know, whatever available space isn't in camera view. Right now I've got it pretty clean so it's a good time to do this. First of all, I had accumulated so much stuff on these shelves that about half of the material that used to be here is gone. I had to get rid of things, I had to put things in storage, because I think one of the things I need to remember was to keep this relatively uncluttered so that it looks good in my videos. So I took all the shelves down and I painted the wall black so that the pots will pop on that black background. And then I added another set of shelves down here low because there was a lot of blank space there. And then I've left this space here in the middle and what I hope to do here is get a big logo, my Andy Ward's Ancient Pottery logo printed out and put back here. So that'll look nice, hopefully, in that space. I just didn't want it to be shelves all the way across. I want it to be kind of broken up. So as for the shelving, most of this, as you can see, is pottery that I've made, but not all of it. Some of it is tools. I've got stacks of pookies down here, and I've got my tools down here, my pottery tools, different hand tools that I use, and my basket, which is my kit. So when I'm going out to do a pottery demonstration somewhere or to teach a workshop, I can just grab this basket, it has everything I need in it, and go. Up here, this is an arrow that a student of mine made for me and gave me uh, in exchange for a workshop that I let her take. And I've got hanging from that arrow, I've got a few little things that I've collected. This is a turtle shell that I found when I was out filming a video last year. This is a etched shell that was given to me for teaching a workshop for Archaeology Southwest. And I have a few other things I want to hang up here. So over time, there'll probably be more stuff. And then, like I said, there'll be a big logo here. And here's something. This is the gourd rattle that Chad Zuber gave me when I went out to his hut recently. And I'd like to hang this up in here as well. Now down on this side, this is where I have all my pigments and paints. I want all my pigments to be available here, but I don't want it to look cluttered or messy. And, and that's hard, that's hard to do. And so I've got everything up here that I use on a regular basis. And I've got some of the things that I don't use so regularly in a cupboard over there. And then I've also gone through and labeled most of these little baby food jars because it's really easy to put your materials in one of these and then later forget what you have in there. So it's really nice. I went down and bought some little like laser printer, you know, peelable labels and I just, I just stick them on there and write what I have in it and that helps me a lot to keep track of what's in these jars. Now these crates that I bought because they look better than cardboard boxes, which I had up here before, contain some extra special goods too. So this crate, the theme of this crate is things for pottery firings. So these are all tools that I take when I go to fire pottery. I've got a lighter, I've got my infrared thermometer, I've got my thermocouple, uh, I've got some welding gloves, things like that. So this is my firing stuff. So if I'm going out firing, I can just grab that box off the shelf and get what I need out of it. And this crate here, this is full of pottery sherds. I've shown on this channel before my collection of ancient pottery sherds that I collected when I was younger and talked about kind of the ethics of collecting artifacts from out in the desert. But these are ones that I've already had for a long time, and these help me a great deal. So when I'm trying to make a particular type of ancient pottery, I can go to the box, I can find a shirt of the type I'm trying to make, and kind of look at how the paint was applied, and how the slip was applied, and maybe how the pot was fired, different things that I can learn. So to me, they're very educational. It's a useful collection for me. And over here is where I keep my clay. These are bins, little rubber-made bins 
that have clay in them, wet clay, and so I keep it fresh and keep it from drying out by putting them in these bins, and that's pretty handy for me. And then also if I'm going out to teach a workshop or to do a demonstration, I can just grab one of those bins off the shelf and I'm ready to go. Over here, these are my collection of pottery tools. These are commercial paintbrushes, well mostly commercial paintbrushes. I have some that are not. I have one that is a brush made out of human hair that was given to me by Amada Ortiz Potter. I have a couple of yucca brushes in here, but mostly they're store-bought brushes. And I use these sometimes, and I also bring them to workshops and let the students you know, grab the brush they need out of there. And in this container, I keep tools that are more vertical in form. So I have a deer rib bone, I have pieces of wood, I have, a, I have pencils and pens, I have engine push rods, uh, I have stone knives, I have a needle tool made out of a mesquite thorn. So some of these are store-bought tools, some of these are commercial products, some of them are primitive products, and I will choose which tool I use based upon the project I'm working on and whether or not I want it to be super authentic or if I just don't care and I'm just looking to be fast. So uh, I have a variety of tools depending on whether or not I need to be authentic. And the same goes for all the tools in this basket. So these are tools that are less vertical. They won't stick in that cup the same way. I have a piece of buckskin that I use for smoothing the pottery or smoothing the rim. I have my gourd scrapers in here. I have stones, smooth stones for polishing the pottery. I also have some commercial tools. I have like this wire cutoff tool. I have uh, some credit cards in here that I use for scraping pottery. I have stone blades in here. A little piece of fur that I use for applying slip. Some metal ribs all kinds of different tools that I use, some authentic and some not authentic, again, depending on the project I'm working on. Now, aside from the tools and the pots, let me show you what else I have in my studio. This is my main workbench, and this is a really old, heavy-duty, solid hardwood workbench. I put a new top on it a few years ago. It's just a piece of plywood that's screwed down. Underneath that is that original hardwood top, but it had a lot of grease and oil on it and stuff. And I just couldn't get it all off of there, and I didn't want that oil getting in my clay when I worked on it. So putting a new piece of wood on top helped a lot for having a nice, clean work surface for clay. Underneath the workbench are several old milk crates full of different pottery supplies. These are more than just a place to store items. They're also handy because when I'm going out to teach a workshop, I can just grab those milk crates out, throw them in my truck and go, and they have lots of pookies and little pallets and all kinds of things that we use in the workshop in there. Over here, I've got a small kitchen area, and this is really handy because when you're working with clay, you often need water. And I have a sink right here, which is handy. Now, to keep the clay from going down and plugging up my drain, I actually use this bin to catch the water in. So when I'm cleaning out clay, I make sure it doesn't go down the drain. It goes into that little bin, and then I can take that out and throw it on the plants later. That way clay doesn't go down my drain and clog it up. Then this is that counter space I was talking about that often gets cluttered with junk. I've got it clean right now, so it'd be nice to keep it that way, but you know, inevitably the stuff that I'm working on on the workbench when I go to film gets put over here and it does get pretty cluttered. And in this cupboard over here, this is some of the clutter that was on my shelves before I cleaned that up. And in here I've got a lot of little containers that I can use to mix up slips and paints. This is really important. Uh, so I want to have these nearby, but not out where everybody can see it when I'm making a video. So this cupboard is a great place for that because it's nearby, it's easy to get to, uh, but at the same time, it's not in sight of everybody watching my videos all the time. So this is mostly just containers. These are mostly empty containers. And up here, we have some containers that are full that are storing materials, different slips and stuff that I'm keeping for later. Down underneath here, I actually have a little refrigerator where I can keep cold drinks and I have a toaster oven so I can heat up some food if I want to when I'm out here. So now I'm on the other side of the workshop. You can see this is the door into my garage and my toolbox, which is always a mess. And this is that couch I was talking about, which is a great place to sit down if it's not full of junk. And so tonight, somebody's actually coming over to watch my Zoom class from here in the studio. And so I have to have this couch all cleaned off so they have some place to sit. Remember when they used to do like Happy Days and some of those sitcoms back in the 70s and 80s and they'd say, this show was filmed in front of a live studio audience. So that's what I'll have tonight, a live studio audience. Here next to me on the couch, I've got some t-shirts that I sell on my website. I'm almost out of those. I've got a few left. Uh, and then here, this is my big shade cloth that I bought. This is a big tarp that'll set up and it'll give me a lot of shade for teaching pottery workshops outdoors. The man who made it hand delivered it to me here a couple months ago now, probably. I think it was September or October and I haven't moved it since. I've been so busy making videos and making pots and doing the things I need to do that I haven't had time to mess with it. But 
I don't need it until March when my first spring workshop is. So sometime between now and March, probably, you know, January, February, I will get this set up, get the poles all set up and the lines and set it up somewhere and, and practice setting it up so I know what I'm doing. But um, this will be, I think it's like 17 by 24. It's a big, big shade. So this will be awesome for teaching pottery under in an outdoor environment. Now, as we come around this side of the workshop, we will see this is a secondary workbench that I have and it's adjustable height wise. So I use this a lot in the summer when it's too hot to work out here on the porch or sometimes in the winter if it's especially cold, I'll wheel this into my office in the house and I can set up and film on this workbench in the house because it has wheels. And as I said, it's adjustable so I can go down or up to wherever I need it. And when I'm doing my Zoom pottery workshop, which I do every Wednesday night, I just wheel this over to my other workbench and that gives me a different, more elevated countertop. So I put the computer and all the things that I don't want to get wet up on this higher workbench and then I work on the pottery and things get wet down on the lower workbench. That keeps the computer and all those electronic gadgets out of the way of getting damaged by the water when I'm working on pottery. And finally, back here in the back, we've got all these buckets full of clay. These are all different kinds of clay that I use for different things. Some of these clays are for slips. Some of it is that Smectite slip that I sell on my website. Some of it is some minerals, pigment minerals that I'm in the process of dealing with or haven't finished processing yet. Uh, and, and different clays from different places. So I have to have brown clays for when I'm making, say, Mogion pottery. Or I have to have red clay when I'm trying to make redware. I have to have buff clay when I'm trying to make Hohokam pottery. You see what I'm saying? Depending on the kind of pottery I'm making, I need different sorts of clays. So I, I have to keep three, four, five different kinds on hand all the time, not to mention all the slips and other things that I'm dealing with. So I've got quite the collection of clays and slips here. If you find a really great clay and you want to share it with me, don't. Believe me, I have plenty already to deal with. Now a couple more things I wanted to show you. These curtains here, I have them tied up right now because the wind was blowing earlier and I didn't want them blowing around. But I just put these up when I redid the studio recently. And when I'm filming, I'll pull these curtains across here and shut this off. That keeps the outside light from the backyard from shining in on my set. So I can control the lighting better. I get better lighting on my set if I have these curtains up and keep the outside light from shining in. And then these lights that I'm using, these are literally like the cheapest lights you can buy from Amazon. So they're not really fancy, but they work really good for what I'm doing, lighting up my set. So I have this one here that's closer to the workbench. That's the primary one. And then this one over here, I have a little farther away from the workbench and it provides a little more ambient light, just so the shadows aren't too deep. And then one last thing, I'll show you the project I'm working on right now. This is a Pueblo style canteen that I'm working on and it's just about done. It's all made and slipped and tonight I'm gonna to polish it and paint it in our Ancient Potters Club Wednesday night Zoom class. If you'd like to learn more about some of the tools I use, check out this video right here, which is gonna show you how I make some of those tools. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.